What's up, everybody? How you all doing? Welcome to the round nine fan cams. Uh, another disappointing loss. Welcome it's to uh, getting pretty repetitive these days. Uh, the Demons, way too good. 13, 16, 94 to Carlton, 10, 8, 68. Just another, <clears throat> another standard day out, really. I don't think we've... Um, I don't think there's too much to be shocked about with that, to be honest. Um, we're here again. It's, it's going to be a very similar situation. Uh, tonight's going to be a little bit more therapy. Uh, you know, it looks grim. It is pretty grim, depending on how you look at it. Um, but, you know, what can you do? We, we're, we are where we are. We deserve to be where we are because of the way we play. Um, we front up and do this. Almost every well, yeah, every time we play a, a final side, and um, you know, disappointing. But um, if you're new to fan cams, welcome. What we're going to do tonight is just get as many of you supporters on board to have a chat about the game and, and what happened today. Uh, it can be about the game. It can be high level. I think I think tonight might be a little bit more high level, given where we're almost halfway through the season and we've got a pretty pretty good sample size as to where we're at and, and, you know, what's to come back and, and all of that. But um, obviously always reminding you all, just keep it, keep it respective, no personal attacks, no race, no racism, no sexism, just the usual stuff, which you guys are pretty good at doing. Um, keep the comments about the performance. Um, we have a responsibility as fans uh, on the platform to, to not cross that line, which we do a pretty good job of. Uh, I'm going to put the link in the, in the comments shortly, jump in, have a chat. And, uh, you know, we'll go from there. So, anyway, it is what it is. Uh, the link's going in in a moment. I'm going to get Paolo on to start us off. Hello, mate. Terry. I think you say it every – I think you start the same every week. <laughs> what do you say? Same shit every week, as Ma said, mate. What do you just – I mean, I mean, look, I'll, 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 I'll always talk to people on Twitter and games and stuff. And look, everyone's got their own opinion, mate. But I mean, there are ser there are people out there accepting this. I mean, what what has happened to this football club? There are people now saying next week, oh, uh, yeah, if we if we beat Hawthorne, it'll be okay. I mean, that that's where our standard has dropped. We have to beat second last next week for it to be okay. That's that's True. that's where, that is where we are at as a football club, and they've bought in Sardin Williams, and there has been no improvement. Improvement had to come from beating these teams that you know are in and around the eight, in and around the top four and top six, and they are just not good enough, mate. I don't know if it's a coaching thing now. I don't know if it's a development thing. I I genuinely can't put a finger on it, but I do fear. I fear deeply for David Teague next week if we lose to if we lose to Hawthorne, you know, and all these people all these people accepting it bullshit today. I mean, what happens if we lose next week? What are we going to come up with next week? Oh, it was, oh, it was the injuries, and oh, it was we didn't have Martin, and we didn't have Fisher, and oh, we didn't have him, and we didn't have her, and he could have played, and he would have made an improvement. We had Martin and Fisher in against Collingwood, who are arguably one of the worst teams in the league this year, and we still couldn't beat them. Saad was fully fit. Williams was fully fit, and we still couldn't get the job done. And people are saying, oh, you know, yeah, top eight side, you know, we, we've been in and around. The, eff the effort's been good. So that's what we're applauding now, effort. Is that what we're clapping now? Is, is that what the club has become, effort? What it, you reckon Harmsy and Marku, who I spoke to over last week, you reckon they would have applauded effort? If they were applauding effort, mate, they would have grabbed you by the they would have grabbed you by the bloody by the jersey and said piss off. They would have said piss off. They don't know what it means, mate. They just don't know what it means. And the fan base, the standard has just dropped terribly. It has dropped terribly, mate. There are people behind us yesterday. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. Oh, it's all good. We're three and six again. It's all right. You know, the, the club will accept that it's all good. It's all good. No problems. We'll clap them off again. Here we go. Same shit every week. Same shit every week, Terry. And that, that, the problem is now, right, it's just becoming less and less impressive as the weeks go on. Yeah. We're, I think we're, we're gradually just getting worse and worse and worse as the year goes on. And it's going to become an issue where 
we're not riding the wave of our own momentum. We're trying to push back against the tide. That's what we're. That's what's going to happen. That's what's happening at the moment. Three and six, the tide is coming in on us, and we're trying to push back against it. And I don't know how you push back against it. What's looking like it's going to be a tsunami if we lose next week. So, I mean that. <laughs> The that's the part that scares me. Yeah. That's the part that scares me. A, a lot of the commentary I've seen so far is centered around, oh well, it's you know next week if we lose, then we'll pull get the real. Out. It's like get <laughs> real, fucking get real. <laughs> Wait, yeah. uh, I mean, look, our, look, and God bless his soul, Claude from AFTV. What did he say? Wake up and smell the fucking coffee. Wake yeah. up and smell it. Yeah, I mean, look, I everyone's know. got everyone's got different coping mechanisms for. That's okay, that's fine, that's fine. Trauma, but yeah, it's fine. It just, mate, I think, I think the day was epitomised by. <laughs> I mean, there was like ten minutes to go, and we threw Liam Jones up a full forward, and I'm like, oh god. I just said to myself, "What the fuck is going on?" I was laughing. I was in the grandstand laughing. If you don't laugh, you die. I say it every week. Um, I think we've played – is this finals team number four now? Five? I don't Can even we... know, mate. I've lost count. But it's okay. What is it? But every year it's the same thing. It's, oh, oh we played finals team and oh, we only lost by four goals. And then, and then oh, we lost to Essen. Oh, we lost – we lose to Hawthorne next week. Oh, if Charlie had a played, if, if Jack Martin had a played, if Zach Fisher – you know what the problem is? If, 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 yeah. if, if. If this had to happen, if that happened, but it's not happening. It's not happening. It's not happening. I still, I think the list is good enough, and I think we, we are underachieving. And some mate, the leaders have got to be questioned at this club, mate. Whether or not Cripp is playing with a sort, they just don't play with an edge. There's just no competitive edge in there. I, I don't look at this side and think to myself, "Well, okay, yeah, I know we're going to throw it up to them this week." And I mean, Melbourne had us at arm's length all day, mate. We we never mounted a case against them today, mate. I mean. Oh, uh, yeah, we got within four goals. Great. We got within four goals of Richmond last year. We got within four goals of Richmond the year before. We got within four goals of Richmond this year. We beat Well, we beat the Western Bulldogs last year by 40 points, and we lost them this year. Yeah. I think this yeah, time last year. And now? What's on between then and now? I think this time last year we had beaten Geelong and, and the Doggies. Um, but I'm more looking at this year because I, I, I genuinely think Correct. Melbourne – Melbourne, Richmond, Brisbane, Port, and the Doggies that we've played in 2021, I think the five of them will all play finals. I could be wrong, but I think that's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty, you know, close to accurate. Maybe one will fall off completely. I don't think so. But, yeah. um, I, I, like you said, I, I, we just didn't really mount a case. First quarter was, I wasn't, I wasn't disgusted. Um, but we're all in certain facets of the game, but we just still can't. Yeah. I just, I just, I don't, I just don't like how we set up structurally. I don't like the way we transition. I could make the, the way we transition from offense to defense. <sighs> Fucking hell, mate. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and it's, again, it's I mean, horrific. I'm, I'm, I'm all on the train home. I, li I genuinely, I'm not going to yell and scream tonight, but. And I don't generally do it, but I never do. Well, I, I do it at the game. I mean, we all do it. Yeah, at the game. of course. That's, that's when course. I try. Well, to let I'm, it out. I'm, I'm red in the face from screaming at the game. Um, I tell you, I'm very red, mate. I thought yeah, you got I got, uh, I got a little rowdy, and I've, I, uh, I don't know, might have got some windburn, but I just found found myself on the way home tonight, just lowering my expectations. In, I felt oh, it internally I'm saying, don't. "Don't, no, no," as in, as in, for this year, going into, oh well. It's not going to be this year, so let's let's go back into not rebuild mode, but uh, into maybe we really like. When does the conversation come up where we genuinely move on from the older guys? And the, you know me, I love Murph with all of my heart and soul. I love yeah. Levi, but like we're three and six now. Come on, Terry, Terry, Terry. These guys have been there for eight to ten years and haven't been good enough for an eight to ten year period. What the hell is going to change if if they're still there? We've had the same results that we're having now that we've had in the last sort of eight to ten years, bar maybe when when did we make finals, sort of 2011, 2013, which was under a different regime, right? But the problem is now it's that, I mean, where 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 do we go to from here? Like it's just it's not, is it 
do they look at it and say, all right, it's a list problem. The list isn't good enough. Or is it the coaches? Are the assistant coaches at the end of the year? That There, there just has to be a clean out. That, that's, yeah. that's, a, that's going to happen. That's yeah. clearly going to happen, right, because the season hasn't been good enough thus far, right? But people saying now, oh, you know, yeah, yeah, you, your run home's okay. Yeah, your run home is okay. Do you, do you honestly think we're going to win another nine games for the year doing what we're doing at the moment? Are we going to win seven more games for the year? Oh, mate, oh, who knows? Who knows? It, yeah. it is, and this is the thing. I mean, people saying, "Oh, yeah, you know, we, we got within four goals of of whoever." Did we, this is what we were saying in two thousand and sixteen, mate. We were getting. I remember late in the season twenty nineteen, we got within four goals of Richmond in the wet. I remember that game. I, I was at that game. Twenty twenty, I think round one, we, we, we've been within four goals of top sides for, for years. Like it's hey, not something. So have we actually happened. shown any improvement? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we haven't been blown out by 10, 11 goals. That's – that's well done. Well, well done. Well done. Well, well done. done. Yeah. Great stuff. Let's clap that, shall we? Yeah, yeah. The, the Oz kickers as well. We'll clap them off the ground too. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. Look, I know it's hard. And I just go into mentally, I go into perspective mode. And yeah, you know, We all do, right? We all do. But it's not – it's – it's it's there is just – there is a rot inside this club that just – there's just a stench every time we go out there that just – and, you know, I mean, we can – you know, I, I was good good to see Stocker sort of get involved in the middle as well, which was, you know, which I enjoyed seeing. He, he had a bloody dip. You know, he, he showed a bit of flair in, inside there as well and, and used the ball, I think, relatively well when he got it. But the problem is each week we're just picking out individuals, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. And, it's and, not and, like- and we're picking out individuals that are just going to, you know, we think that they're just going to come back in. We just think Martin and Fisher are going to come back in and Charlie Kerno is going to come back in and all these injured players are going to come in and everything's just going to change. It's not. It's not. <laughs> it's not. No. I mean, what, what have the guys, I mean, honestly, what have the guys who are out of the side done, right, on a consistent basis to say that when they come back in, everything's just going to change? It's not a go at them, though. That's no, not no, not at all, not at all, not at all. It's but, just, uh, like, I just don't see where this veil of, I don't know, I don't know where that veil comes from. It just. What's the, like, next week it's, <laughs> next week it's Hawthorne. What, what is the change that can be made? I, I mean, I, I thought the changes were pretty good today. I actually, to be honest, I don't know what you think, but I, I thought Newman coming back really helped the structure a little bit. Because we got to get Stocker back up the ground a bit. Yes. Um, I love I love the Doherty move. I like the Zach Williams move behind the ball, even though he didn't really dominate today. I thought Zach, whatever. I thought it was better, but <sighs> we're just not there, man. You can change and bring in all the different names that you want. I mean, like when I when I looked at the ins and outs, and this is no knocks on the guys who have come in, come in and out because I like Newman as a footballer. But when when I saw this team sheet. Right, and the guys who came, who got dropped, and the guys who replaced them, I thought, oh, it wasn't. Oh fuck, jeez, yeah, here we go, here we go. Yeah. You know, just Netherfield just did some things today that were just, yeah, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know about him, I don't know about a lot of these guys, you know, and and, and as I said, and and I speak to a few people who were who have been sort of involved with the club in previous years. I mean, like, who actually comes back into this side that makes a genuine difference to us? Mm. Maybe Martin and Fisher, yeah. But as I said, mate, <laughs> they're against Collingwood and we still couldn't get it done. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> uh, fuck, man. At least we have each other, eh? No, oh, well, mate, even, even that might end if they keep fucking playing this way, mate, the way we're fucking going, mate. I want to, no, I'll never give up. I'll never give up, but yeah, of course. I mean, it's just structurally and just, I mean, our, our defence. I mean, but this is the thing, right? I mean, Liam Jones goes up forward, right? But what is there? Why is there this persistence to continually play this three tall forward line? Don't you have something else in your repertoire that can try to trouble the Melbourne defence? I mean, you know, you've got some smalls that are in form. You know, maybe you've got to structure something around that. I don't know. Uh, something has to change. Something has to change, whether it's personnel, whether it's coaches, whether it's – I mean, would you have accepted three and six at, at round nine at the start of the year? Would the club no. accept three and six? I don't think the club accepts three and six, and we'll find out very shortly when we go to three and seven, if we go to three and seven, if the club accept that. Yeah, spot on. Uh, spot on, Paolo. 
Um, think, uh, yeah, jump and punch on uh, Tuesday, 8 p.m. We'll go yep. up. Uh, yeah, the other two fellas I do it with are, um, yeah, not uh, not particularly pleased. <laughs> yeah, I don't think any of us are, mate. Yeah, but, uh, mate you're, you're a bit from Rockwell tonight, I reckon. So Yeah, always, uh, yeah. always appreciate chatting to you, brother. No worries. Chat soon. All, right. All the best. Ciao, See mate. You, mate. Thanks very much to Ugur here. Says, don't give up, Terry. I won't give up. No one's going to give up. I think we can all agree none of us are going to give up. We're all going to show up. We're all going to support. Come Thursday next week, we're going to mount the big case for Hawthorne. Of course, no one's going to show up. But it's just about, I think this this is all about voicing, you know, just voicing what your pain is at the moment. Um, it's not about going home and having a drink. Alcohol is a depressant. You don't need a depressant to keep drinking to numb the pain and then, and then lash out on your, your your friends and family. It's about coming here in an environment where you can you can talk about it, get it out in the open, and and get over it because that's what we're going to have to do. So, anyway, appreciate that, Paolo. Pommy, I'm going to get you in, mate. Before you you there? Hello. Before you start, I've got a little clip to play. Huh? <laughs> oh, for God's sake! One sec. Come on! <laughs> when is it going to end, Robbie? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, D DT is my spirit animal. I tell you, I feel, I feel that mug more and more every day. What happened, mate? I mean, it, it's a tough one. I'm just breaking down data while I was listening to Young. As you say, hello. Sounds oh, so good when you say it, but when you, you, you've got a nasally voice like mine, it sounds trash. Um, I mean, what can you say? I mean... That second quarter, I, I, I thought one of the most poignant stats Pom can give you is by that end of that half, just to paint the picture of where we are, they had 54 points. 37 of them were scored by transition from the defence to Cowton's 15. Mm. And our pressure acts were an all-time high, 50 pressure acts for the entire quarter there from Cowton's team. We know I'm picking on Cowton's pressure acts, versus 80 from them. You saw the tide change. Interesting enough, only six players at Carlton had over five pressure acts, the top being Crips 13 um, in that quarter. And, and it's, it's there, you see, that's where the game is won and lost. The first quarter, the last five minutes were absolutely appalling. Only 11 pressure acts laid in seven minutes of football to 20 of theirs. We had that lapse, and that lapse continued into the second quarter. And I think one of the big things is we can't, and you look at our setup behind the ball, it's, it's, it's appalling. And it's okay. And Paolo touched on it. Fans saying we gave Port Adelaide a game. We gave Brisbane a game. Let me let you into a little secret of Daddy Dan. When I tell my kids, well done, you tried, that's my way of saying you're fucking shit. That is literally, I, I can't, my wife would batter me if I tell my kids they were shit. So I, I give them this. Oh, you tried. Good effort. And that's the problem. We try. That's fantastic. But against these top sides, if you're not structurally sound behind the ball, you saw what they did very well. We looked to kick it from a contest. They looked to play it with a handball and looked to penetrate our midfield. It, it's all too easy. It's all too written in the stars. And I mean, I commend you if you sit and watch that performance and you start saying things like, what if, if only my Nana had wheels, she'd be a bike. That's phenomenal. Credit to you. But in the real world, trying and effort don't win your football matches. Skills do. Structure does. And at the moment, structurally, you look at our first nine games, we are miles, miles away. You're talking... At the moment, to beat a top eight side, we have to play out of our skin and they have to play poor. And we saw the poor Melbourne for 15 minutes of the first. And yeah, we gained ascendancy. Once they sharpened it up, made it a little bit more hard, bullied us a little bit. We saw who we are. I mean, the only person who comes off the ground today with any respect for me is Harry Mackay. One shoulder and still made a battle of it. But I've seen comments from Carlton fans saying Stephen Mears a dog because he kept leaning on his shoulders. Against Brisbane, Lockie Neal could hardly stand and our, our, fan, our players decided to give him a free berth. That's what you do to win football matches. You've got to be a bit mean, a bit horrible, a bit nasty. Because let's be honest, Carlton Football Club's PR machine saying how wonderful we are. We're, we respect everyone. We're a nice team. 
doesn't win fucking football matches, I'm afraid. He looks nice on a postcard. But in reality, people think you're a bit of a bell end and they come to your home and take four points every week. Fantastic stuff. Nailed it. Nailed it, mate. Like I, I'm just emotionally, <laughs> mentally, spiritually drained. I mean, I don't know if I'm being doom and gloom in saying that the season is over. Like for me, when I say season over, I mean not making finals. I think we would need something really magical to to play finals. And I say finals because obviously as a fan, you're always a little bit more optimistic than than reality. But also the club made it very clear to us as well. <laughs> You know, and I... Yeah. Terry, I love you. I love you, mate, honestly. No one loves you as much as I do. But don't say the F word, for fuck's sake, man. You, you've got more chance of Carlton playing finals Have you got Taylor Swift in the comment section right now saying, I bang that pommy bloke. Like, that is the same likelihood you've got of us playing finals. Taylor, if you're watching, love you, darling. But, no, serious, mate. Honestly, we're miles away. Structurally, we're appalling. And the thing is, you know what does make me laugh? Is we were we were so easy to beat transition-wise when Bolton was here. Snap forward five years and it's still there, ladies and gentlemen. It hasn't changed. And our mercurial coach, you know, David Teague, the Hollywood dream, Cinderella man, he says last week, I'm not too sure why the ball movement and structure changed as if it wasn't him. So these players are the same players that played under Bolton. You're telling me that they're controlling this and that they're not listening to their line coaches? Because watch every team this year and this week. Who was that easy to break down? It was so written in the stars. Christian Salem takes the intercept from Stephen May. Chip kick onto half forward. Hit the corridor. Game over. Cowton were jogging back. I saw Nathan Jones outrun Adam Saad for their got for Bailey Fritch's goal. Are you having a laugh? Adam Saad is, is quick. Nathan Jones is as fast as my nana. And God rest her soul, she's been dead since 2005. Like, what's going on? Yeah. Uh, oh, dear. Oh, dear. I'm lost for words. I am. I'm lost for words. Always find something to say, but not tonight. So I mean, I mean, Terry, I love you, but I mean, this this man, this is like Arsenal, bro. We are Arsenal Football Club. You know, we talk about '95 was a pretty good fucking year, but we've done nothing since then, and we, we, we're somehow feeling that this team should perform to our expectations because we're Carlton. But what does Carlton mean anymore? Like yeah. field-wise, it's Mickey Mouse. It, it, it's proper Mickey Mouse. I'm using that about my own team. It's it's inevitable, bro. It is inevitable. Like, like the first quarter, you've got Lockie Fogarty, 14 pressure acts. And then the average after him is three. And it's the same tale every quarter for Carlton. Quarter three, Patrick Cripps, 13. Quarter four, do you know who was the top pressure act getter on the ground? Quarter four, you'll love this. Who? With eight. Mark Murphy. Mark Murphy and Cottrell had eight pressure involvements. Like, if Mark Murphy is leading our pressure acts when he had 15 for the entire game in the fourth quarter, there's an issue. Because Cripps did his best work previous quarters. Foggett, he did his best work previous quarters. Zach Williams had one pressure act in the second half. And he's on 800k. He's got a good fucking surname. He's just wandering around for banter at the moment. This is the problem we've got. Our standards have been set so low. And now we've got a fan base like Arsenal three years ago. Wenger out, Wenger in. And you know what? If things don't change, we're going to be mediocre because we've got the list. This list is good. Look at this list. Look at it against all the other lists. It's by no means a shambles, but it's the structure. The structure has been ripped away from this club. And the more they lose and the more they get into these habits, we are so far away from the top eight. You can talk tough draws. You can talk, you know, all these Scooby-Doo little theories. The problem is at the moment is we're nowhere near beating these sides because at the breakdown, it's too easy. Way mm. too easy. Yeah. Well said, mate. Very well said, as always. I love well. you all. I mean, stick fat.
stink fart. I'm not going to say it's game over. Let's all freaking, you know, go to an island and drink the Kool-Aid. That's poisonous. But at the moment, we're, we're a long way away and we, we deserve better. All of you deserve better as fans. Those who have stuck by them, those who haven't. When you're getting beaten structurally, you've got big issues, man. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Good on you, mate. Love you. Love you too. Shannon. Hello. Somebody can put a smile on my face. What's going on? <laughs> Not too much. <gasps> Just got home. How was that? Look, not great. <laughs> Highlight of my day was Murph's goal in the last quarter, but I was like the only one that stood up and cheered. Like everyone's like, what is she doing? And I'm like, Murph just kicked a goal. <laughs> it's uh it's just sad that like we have to pick a highlight like that to sort of be happy yeah. about. I mean, I get it. Melbourne are good. They're better than they've been better than us all year, and I get all of that. But I just I don't know. Do do you feel? Did you feel like at any point we were like a genuine giving them a genuine scare? I, I don't know about you. I, I didn't really feel like we gave them a genuine scare where they had to really dig deep and find something. Whereas I think no, I I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't at all. I think we gave the Bulldogs more of a scare last week. To be perfectly honest, and Melbourne Melbourne they beat us without Max Gorn having much of an input, really. He won the hit outs, but that's about as far as we go for him. I, I didn't see that he had a big impact at all. But, look, Connor's going down in the first 90 seconds is probably not ideal. And no. I, I don't like player bashing, but I just don't think Gibbons at the moment is up to it. Yeah, it's, it's hard because I... He pulled out of a couple of contests and, and, like, it's not – there's something going on because Gibbo is not one to pull out of a contest and I just I just don't know what's up. Yeah, I think I noticed that a couple of times. Levi did it once. I think even Parksy did it once. Um, I don't know whether, whether there was, like, a voice behind them saying, mine, mine, and then they were pulling out. But I, I definitely noticed a few, a few guys pull out of contests, which yeah. – yeah, I don't want to get on here and call anyone soft or weak, whatever. But, like, I definitely saw it enough to say it happened. Yeah. And you it's know? not – and then, then what, what kind of precedent does that set across the board, really? Like, what, what kind of precedent does it set? And it, it's sad because I agree with Pom. We actually have a really good list. It's just the structure behind it is just – I don't know. Like, we, we get caught behind the ball too often. And the prime example was oh, Jacob Wiedering in that in that second quarter where Oscar McDonald just got the ball over the back and just ran into an open goal. Like, you can't you, – I love Wieders. And it was, he was – his colours were lowered today for me. I, I don't know what was – it was just not the same Jacob Wiedering as we see every week. I just don't know. It, it, I, it, I can't describe it at the moment. Like, I'm just I'm upset. And I'm disappointed, mm. and it's 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 sad because we have eighty what eighty thousand members, and we're just disappointing them every week. And we we've I said it to my dad in the car on the way home. We've over promised and under delivered. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's 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 really true. Yeah, and I, I think also, look, Pom said it before. I don't know how you feel about the list. Like I know a lot of, a lot of people will look to what we don't have. I mean, I always look at what we do have. I think we've got so many players. When I look at the the team sheet, I'm like, gun, 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 gun. And it's like, am I wrong in calling the six of them guns or are they underperforming? And I, I just think there's plenty there. I know Charlie's not there. I know um, Mitch McGovern's not there. But, I mean, does the do, do, do the individuals really fix the collective mentality? Because I feel like there's a collective mentality that's an issue as opposed is. to individual brilliance coming in and being the four or five goal difference. We say it every week. It's, it's, it's one of those things where you, you can't, you can't just pinpoint one issue. It, it's several issues culminating in one massive issue. Mm. Like each player. Yes. In their own right is fantastic, but we can't keep relying on Sam Walsh every week. Like all these gun players that we say we have, need to lift like Williams is the biggest example of that like right. I don't yeah. sit there watching him get paid eight hundred thousand dollars to kick the ball to the opposition yeah. or, or to to not spoil and just to let it happen 
Like it, it's it's frustrating because we all know that they're gun players. It's just something's just not clicking at the moment. And when it clicks, boom, watch out everybody else. But it's just not clicking right now. And it's just a few little tweaks I feel in the game plan and the structure that it'll just change everything. But uh, everyone said it, and I'm going to agree, we need to rotate these assistant coaches out. Teague yeah. needs a stronger base of assistant coaches around him because I just don't think it's working anymore. Yeah. The hard, the hard part is I think – I wouldn't be. I mean, surely the club are fully aware of that. And uh, let's just say they, they know it and they, they've already got plans for next year. The hard part is we've got to still sit through the rest yeah. of the year with the makeup that we have. And that probably means more shortcomings slash disappointment, which just is going to unsettle us even more. And yeah. we haven't yeah. lost a game to a, I mean, Collingwood's a bad loss in retrospect now because we've now played nine games and we've seen where they are. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to live in fear, but a lot of people are talking about next week and if we lose to Hawthorne, oh, my God. <laughs> Can you imagine next week's fan cam if we lose to Hawthorne? I'm cancelling it. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no, I just, I just want them to, like, I can't say I can't even say let them put in effort anymore because, like, they put in effort and I'm still disappointed. So yeah. I, I don't know anymore. Like, I love the boys to death and I will I will support them to my dying day. But fuck me. Yeah, I know, I know. I feel you. I feel you, hun. <laughs> I feel you. <ya. laughs> um, great to have you on. Thank you so much Happy for coming. See you, Terry. See you, Shannon. Joe. Get on, mate. There you go, mate. You know what? I'm not. I'm. I'm gonna have a different. Uh, I'm gonna have a different opinion to a few people. Yeah, I'm not as disappointed because I actually went into the game with no expectation today for the first time in a long time. I had zero expectation of us today, and it, I'm gonna say it helped a bit. It did help a bit because I wasn't expecting us to win at, at, against the side that, in all honesty. If, if you're sitting here saying that Melbourne, if, you, if you're taking any way, anything away from Melbourne today, they are the most well-drilled side I've seen since Richmond of two years ago from what, what yeah. I saw today. They're clinical. Yeah. Their structures are unbelievable. They're clean. They punish. That they're, it's, That's not just a final side. That's a premiership contending side. That's what we came up against today. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, <laughs> what do you expect, man? Like, we're, <laughs> we're not as good as them. It's very simple. We're just not. As a, as a football club, as a team, at the moment, we're not as good as them. But 12 months ago, I've got a lot of Melbourne mates. 12 months ago, what they saw today is what their team was producing. So what they saw from us is what their team was producing. Literally 12 months ago. 12 months ago, we lost this team by a point. And now they've, they're have they 9-0 undefeated on, on the season. They're not 9-0 for no reason. So yeah. I'm, not, I'm not giving us excuses. I Of course, I'd still love to win. But... The team I saw today, Melbourne, they're just unbelievable. Like they, they really are. I would say they've improved, hey, from last year, and I would say Mate. that we have not improved from last year. Yeah, yeah, and I think, uh, and I mean, I agree with Pommy was talking about the defensive structures. I agree with that. I don't know, I don't know how our defensive structures and our defensive game has gone so far backwards because last year that was where I was most confident was us not yeah. conceding a big score. It was us looking at our back six going, we're locked and loaded. Like you're not getting past that. It was just not being able to kick a score. I understand Teague wants to open the game up a bit. He wants to play more attacking football. Fine. But, man, coaching staff, like, we don't have the players for it. We just don't, man. We don't. You need a, you need more of a balance. We, we just do. We need more of a balance in the way that we structure up. I think if we can get that right, I feel like – I feel like we'll see a competitive cut like we did last year, and I feel like you'll actually see improvement. But at the moment, we, we're just playing – we're playing gun-ho, gun and we just don't have the players to execute. We just simply don't. It's true. You know, yeah. Say whatever you want about Teague. He wasn't the one out there fumbling pissy handballs on the last line of defence or pissy handballs in the middle of the park. That's the players, man. That's the players. Just one more thing on the Ds um, compared to us – because I know a lot of people said, oh, we, we couldn't change the coaching box because of COVID. Well, the D's brought in Choco <laughs> after a COVID year. Um, they really did restructure things around Goodwin. And, and I do definitely take your point. I, I spoke to Caden McDonald during the week as well. He's a Melbourne man. And he was saying 
that Carlton reminds him of Melbourne uh, 2017. They were sort of, it was all there. They just hadn't really gelled. And um, he was saying the biggest thing that changed them was bringing in Uze, bringing in Choco. Uh, I think he mentioned one more assistant coach as well. And he said after that, standards started sort of rising and, and whatnot. And it's it's just, it's like an uncontrollable situation because I think we all, a lot, maybe not all of us, maybe there are some people that still believe in the entire coaches box but I think a lot of us are pointing out the assistant coaches and rightly or wrongly whatever um but the reality is it's not changing until September October so we're yep. going to have to deal with what we've got so how can we get the most out of what we have today right now what what's you know because we we can't just give up we've got to get better yeah uh, simple as that. I think you hit the nail on the head. We can't change the coaching box right now. There will definitely be changes at the end of the year. If not, then you'll probably see me give up on this club because that would be an absolute atrocity if we don't look at our coaching box. But it's not Teague. It's it, like you said, it's the support around him, you yeah. know. And you mentioned um, you mentioned the assistant coaches, but Christian Petrarca during the week, I think it was last week, had an interview and they asked him what the difference is between them this year and last year because they've improved out of sight. Yeah. So the biggest thing was in the off season they. They were open and honest with each other about playing for each other, playing as a team. Now, whether or not that comes down to assistant coaches, whether it comes down to mentality, I don't care. But at the end of the day, what I saw today was a team in Melbourne that play for each other. Yeah. Unrewarded running, unselfish running off the ball, opening up space for, for a teammate. It allows for more space and time on the ball, which allows you to be more clean. For us, there was a play, there was a play where Cripps had it in the middle of the ground. I know exactly didn't, which one. I didn't so, handball to Walsh. Well, no, it wasn't even that because he got the handball off Walsh and that's fine, right? So Walsh, he's done his gut running. It's it's to Cripps. He could have given it back to Walsh. I agree. But uh, there was someone sitting near me that had a go at Cripps. And in my head, I'm thinking, this isn't Cripps' fault. Where's the runners? Where's Zach Williams on his outside? Where's Doherty on his outside coming through through the middle of the guts? Where's Saad? Where are these runners that we pay big money to that are not receiving a handball in that position? I don't blame, I don't blame Cripps. I don't blame the coaching staff in that situation. Maybe... Maybe maybe it is maybe it is a system. Maybe that is the system part of it. But at the same time, if you're on the ground, if you're a runner, receive the handball there, man. What are you doing? Where are you? Where are you? You're not playing as a team. You're not. Zach Williams, you're not playing as a team, mate. Getting a kick on the halfback flank and stopping. Run. That's what you're in the team for. Run. I don't care if you're unrewarded for it, but fucking run, man. Mm. We're not playing as a team. It's the biggest difference between what I saw between Melbourne today and Melbourne of last year. Because I, admittedly, I haven't watched them too much this year, to be fair. But the, yeah. that, that is the biggest difference that I saw is their un, unrewarded off-ball running. And they play for each other, man. They play for each other. We do not play for each other. Simple yeah. as that. Simple yeah. as that. I don't know where it comes from. I know that that's the problem. I don't know what the solution is. I don't know where that where, where you find that. I really don't. Really, Another really... one was in their in their forward pocket in the third quarter. You know, like they, they did everything they possibly could to keep the ball in and we didn't want a bar of it. We didn't want a bar of it. They played as a team to keep the ball in. They kicked a goal. Like you've got to be unselfish. You've got to bring effort. Pommy said it's not about effort. I disagree. We didn't bring effort today. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care if we didn't let them have a six-goal swing. It's not about that. It's the little one percenters that aren't record. Right, you can have your stats. We had a record high pressure acts and one percenters. I don't care because it's moments in the game. Yeah. It's moments in the game when those one percenters matter and we don't do it often enough when it matters. Simple yeah. as that. Simple as that, man. Yeah. The game really, uh, the game zeroes into those moments. And I, I don't remember which quarter it was. There was one on the, one of the wings. They just kept it. In the field of play, we had two players there. Might have been a Weedering and Betts connection. I could be wrong on that. Um, and you just sort of saw it, and then I just they were off. And I just, you just knew, you just knew they're in sync with each other, which is very they impressive are. on their behalf. Like they are. It's why, it's why they're going to be there at the pointy end. They seriously will. If they keep playing this way, they will be there, contending for the flag, not for finals. We're talking finals. They're yeah. talking flag. That's how far off. That's how far away we were today. So I'm not. I am not surprised. I'm disappointed, but I'm not surprised in what I saw. Yeah. I'm really not. Terry, it, um, we, we've we got the list on paper. We do. We've said that for how long. We've got these kids that are going to gel at the same time and whatnot. It doesn't matter. You can have all the talent in the world and you'll be GWS. We will never win a flag with the list that they've got. Yeah. Never. 
you've got to play as a team. And we just yeah. don't. We just don't. There was yeah. nothing. Did You were at the game today. Was there any energy about our group? No. Our really fan base? Not. Well, the thing is, I, I'm noticing this season more than maybe ever. And, and I could be wrong because I, I, I did miss a couple of years. I, like the crowd sort of waits for the, the team to do get on a bit of a run. And then we will absolutely, you know, jump on the back of that. And then it doesn't happen. And then we sort of wait for a, a, like an umpiring decision. It doesn't go our way. Then we get on that. And that's where the energy sparks from. Yeah. But I just want to see us kick three or four in a row and and, and then we can add the extra layer and, and go from there. It's, it, it is hard though. It's hard for, you know, tens of thousands of people to get up and about for, for a group that haven't given you, you know, a good amount of, 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 of game time to really jump on board of something. It's, I find it very frustrating. I really do. I agree. I agree. And it, you, you hit it on the head. That's why I asked the question. It has to come from the group. It has to come from the playing group. Our mm. energy comes from what we see on the field. When there's no energy on the field, we're not going to give it back. Very simple. Yeah. It's what I saw today. There was no energy. There was no effort. I don't care about your pressure acts on the stat sheet. It wasn't there. It wasn't there. Looking at the game in isolation and, look, and, and thinking back to what I saw, there were two sides out there and one wanted the ball more all day. Very simple. Fair. Very simple. Fair call, brother. I uh, appreciate right. your perspective. Love it. Big fat. It'll you know turn. It, bro. You It'll know turn. It. <laughs> See you, bro. Hey, almost Blues Brothers, Tuesday morning, 7 a.m. Tuesday a morning, 7 a.m. on the drive to work. Fantastic. That's it. Love your work, bro. Enjoy. Love it. Michael McDonald. Teague is stuck with Bolton's leftovers with no change thanks to COVID. Club needs change on those lines. Love you, Tez. Love you too, Michael. Thank you very much for that. Uh, let's get uh, – where is he? Rocco. He's here. Hey, Rocco. Tez. Mate, hey, you look broken. What's going on? I've got – um, I've, I've been screaming all day. And I think I've got a bit of windburn or something. I don't know. Mate, Red, you look like you're – mate, you got more – Mate, you look like you've gone harder than half our team, mate. Well, that's good. I had a few jumper punches at myself today, mate. That's it. That's it. Jumper punch yourself, man. That was – ah, that's piss poor, man. I'm hearing these comments. This is piss poor, man. There's no excuse for none of this. This is disgraceful. You know what I ask? Who's got better under Teague? I was thinking about that. Who has got better under Teague? And don't mention – I don't want to hear Walsh. I don't want to hear – uh, we doing, and I want to hear McKay. They were always going to be stars, them three. Who else has got better? They've got worse. Gibbons, worse. News, worse. Think about it. Keep going. Williamson, worse. Everyone is getting worse. Jones has got worse. Weren't we praising him last year? Looks like he hasn't got a defensive. Hey, did the team give up when they put him full forward? Was that it? Was that it? Was that the white flag? Jones at full forward. I couldn't believe what I was watching. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sakes, man. We gave up. That was the point when they said, you know how bad he was? They said, listen, you're that bad. We have to put you somewhere where the ball isn't going to be, and that's full forward. <laughs> like the bench wasn't even good enough for him. And you know what's sad? You can't even drop him because who do you put there? Well, I thought about it when it happened. I, in my head, I thought, oh, maybe they've put Jones forward to put Levi in defense. Yeah. Because that could be a little – but I didn't – I don't I don't think he did – I don't think Levi went back. I don't think that no, was what happened. He played a little bit more – what I saw, he played a little bit more in the middle and then, you know, like as a ruck and then he disappeared. I don't know if he got injured or, or what happened, but that was the white flag there. Listen, man, this is no good. I'm telling you, mate, we haven't – I said this after Richmond. Have we improved as a side? And I didn't think we have. And we haven't. We still play those good little patches. Everyone's happy. But really, at the end of the day, there's nothing there, mate. There's nothing there. Midfield, they don't work hard. Defence, you know, like Weedering's uh, – he's going to slowly, slowly – like I know I heard someone say that he didn't have a good game, but – I reckon he's just getting worn down, isn't he? Like he does all the bulk of the work. I mean, Doc, Doc's all right. He he does his work back there. But um, Eddie Betts, he's thirty four and he's mo our most dangerous forward. You know, like that's that's bad. Um, oh, he's he done all right. I don't know. We can go over. It. It just the effort's not there, man. They're not playing for each other. I I think I've said this for a while. I think the coaches lost them. 
the coach has lost them, man, unfortunately. And I think Paul said it, but I fear for him now this year because I don't think he can last. I don't know if it's good or bad. I'm not saying it's a good choice to get rid of him, but I fear for him, man. Yeah, I, 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 fe I fear for... I thought last week there was a bit of psychological damage because we were up by so much and we let that slip by the way we did. And I thought there could be some psychological damage with the group. Like, do they really genuinely believe they can beat the finals teams? And yeah, and I actually, on the way here, I mean, I've gone through it very quickly. I went through everyone that played in their stats and it's not devastatingly bad. There are a few underperforming guys and, and whatnot. Yeah. And then I looked at it, I'm like, fuck, like everyone kind of, did what you expect them before the game? Like how many touches and whatnot do you expect them to get? Yeah. And then, and then right. it's going to a point of we're just so far off. We're just – we're not good enough. No, and until, good enough. We, until we accept we're not good enough, we can't change yeah. that we're not good enough. Exactly. You know? So that's the first step. We've got to accept that we're not good enough. You know what I mean? We've got to accept that. And we've got to accept some of these players are just not – playing to their capacity. Williams. Um, Saar, Rocker, what are you doing? What's he doing out there, mate? What's he doing out there? I don't, I don't get it, man. I, he looks as bad as a footballer. As I, I won't say bad. He, he looks as average as a footballer as I've seen. This is our. This was our hope. And it, they kind of sucked us into it too. That's what shits me. Because we knew he was just a back pocket player worth five or six hundred grand yeah but they sold us this we're gonna play him in the center he wants more midfield time he's he's uh his fitness is up all of that is rubbish he's not a midfielder his fitness isn't up right he's running around he doesn't he doesn't even know where to run to anymore like and if you look at him today i think he would have had like 20 odd possessions or whatever but don't be fooled because I reckon about eight of them were kicking. So don't be fooled by that stat there, you know. So, no, no, he's gone. I don't know, man. And then, I don't know. Like, and if you drop these plays, who are we going to bring in? Like, they brought in Setterfield. He'd done a couple of mistakes there that I went, oh, man, that's bad. That's that's terrible. And they cost goals, you know. Like, so he does. What happened to Setterfield? Like, he's dropped off the the... the the edge too, hasn't he? So this must be, it goes beyond their ability because they've all got ability, right? This goes beyond. This is mental. This is, this is, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm going to stick with this. The coach has lost them. The coach and coaches have lost the team. They're not playing the way a football team should be played. Think about it. Think about it. Why have they dropped off so bad? We're as bad as any team out there at the moment. We're as bad as North. We're as bad as Collingwood. Think about it. What? Because we keep up by we don't lose by four. We don't lose by more than four goals. That's nothing. That's the other team taking their foot off the pedal. They're just keeping us at arm's length. Think about it. They're just keeping us at arm's length and doing what they want with us. Some of those contests we were involved with were disgraceful. Melbourne just like they they storm the patch. You've got to see them. Like when you're sitting up high, you can see it. You can see the way they set up and then they storm in. And and if how many times did they kind of like drop a mark or something and you go, oh, thank God, you know, he dropped a mark and there's another Melbourne player, bang, straight behind him picking up the ball. We don't do that. We get sucked. If I notice a few times, we get sucked into the contest too. Everyone gets sucked into the contest. There's no one on the outside to receive the ball. That's, to me, structure. That's coaching. That's not understanding game plan. Why aren't they understanding the game plan? Why aren't they playing? Everyone stop defending this Teague and the coaches. and everyone Stop defending them. Why aren't they understanding the game plan? They don't understand the one week. Why don't they understand it the week after? Like, why not? It's not that fucking hard. Let's be serious, man. You did a law degree. This is football for fucking crying out loud. It's football. Why aren't they understanding? And this isn't just one week, two weeks. We're years now. This is years and years, and they're still not understanding. We change coaches. We ch there is something mentally wrong with this fucking side, mate, and they're making me mental. 
They are. They really are. They're making us insane. I said, I'm not going to go on to a rant, and you just made me go into a rant. I went to 7-Eleven, and I I went there to get some bread, and there was no bread there, and I walked out and said, fuck out, and they shit me. Now I'm blaming them for the bread that the 7-Eleven do now. It's their fault for everything. They ruin everything. Anyway, it, it was terrible today. It was really terrible. And then, and then it fucking rained on me too, bloody. Anyway. Just to finish it all off. Oh, yeah. Anyway, this uh, just keep keep fat. I suppose we'll be there again next week. I suppose oh, we'll yeah. be there, mate. Lock that in. We'll be there at the MCG next week. Uh, sorry, it's it's at the MCG Saturday one forty five. I can't wait to show oh, up again. I just can't. And that's, no, and, that's and you know what? By the time it gets to like Wednesday, Thursday, you start getting you start believing again. You you get pumped up. The selection panel, too, that's another thing, man. I'm fucking pissed off at the selection panel, man. Like, I still don't get what SBS done. He must have something on, on the coach, man, because I'm telling you, man, why wouldn't you play that kid, you know? Like, he's going to leave at the end of the year, man. He's going to be pissed off, I reckon. Yeah, it's true. Look forward anyway. to uh, look forward to the jumper punch, mate. Great job with Hamzy yeah, and, and Mark Yu. Yeah, yeah. So if anyone hasn't watched it, get on there and watch it. They really give an insight on how a team bonds and what playing for each other means, man. And like I said on the show, these blokes still in contact after 40 years and best of mates. And they used to go out for a beer and they knew each other. So that I'm telling you, there's something in that. There's something in playing for each other. And maybe Melbourne has worked that out this year, but there's something about that. So, yeah, catch that up. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you uh, Tuesday night. Good on you, brother. Thanks so much. Thanks, man. See ya. All righty. Mr Maloney. Hey, Tez. How are you, mate? Fantastic, brother. How are you going? I've been better. I've been, yeah. I mean, I think I've been better every week. Every week, I think I feel like someone asks me and I say the same thing. Me and you feel like, I feel like me and you ride this emotional roller coaster together. We're trying to be positive, trying to be negative, trying to be positive. Glass half full, glass half empty. Today, I feel like the glass has just been completely spilt. <laughs> I dropped the glass today. I threw the glass out. <laughs> Look, I, um, I think today, I think this football club has to look at how Melbourne has t turned the corner and really, really take a good damn look at themselves and, and take that skeleton and apply it to us. Yeah. Simple. That club was in turmoil last year and the same stuff was going on. We get rid of the coach. He's no good. They're yeah, recruiting shit. Okay. And what are we saying right now? Now, everyone, the, the general hypothesis is that, yeah, we've got a good young list and, Okay, well, Melbourne had a good young list last year, so if you want to be the half glass full type of person, let's go off what they're doing. Organisationally, I think our football club is screwed. I, there, there is something in this football club that is a rot that we we haven't changed, we haven't noticed, we haven't fixed, and I don't know what it is. And it's it's quite sad, to, to be honest, to watch it. You know, I actually went, we went there today, and I remember turning around to Paul at some point, I just said, oh, we're not going to win today. You know, there was no feeling of winning, and don't be don't be fooled. Our supporters have given up. There was no Carlton supporters there today, none, none. There would have been five thousand max eight. There were no one. There was no one there. So we have given up, um, and it, it's pretty you know, it's pretty noticeable when you look at Liam Jones playing full forward with ten minutes to go. If you had started the game with Liam Jones playing full forward on Lever, at least you would have given me a point to say he's playing there as a defensive forward to negate mm. Lever. Mm. So at that point, at the start of a game, if you had done that, it would have looked like, shit, it's a different move. Melbourne weren't off guard. They don't know what the hell's going on. Shit, what the hell's Carlton doing? You know what that's doing at the, at the end of the game, doing it? We have no fucking idea what to do with this bloke. I've told you this a thousand times. He's part of the problem. He doesn't play on his man. He gives too much too much space and does not respect his player enough. Good forwards take advantage of him. And I think Casbolt, I do think like like you spoke about before about how Casbolt was off the ground. He actually was injured. He I doubt he will play probably for the rest of the year now. I I, I think that that was his way out now. I think he's injured and he probably won't play ever again. If if it is a bad injury. I think to, Tom DeConney comes straight in. Um, but, but yeah, it just seemed like white white flagness. 
in that last 10 minutes, putting him up there. I didn't like that at all. And I don't want us to, as as a supporter group to throw out, throw out, bib out of the bloody blanket and say, Teague's the problem. We voted him in. Yeah, that's right. We were, we were the crowd who wanted him in. Okay, now there's this massive thing, oh, Clarkson, get Clarkson. Clarkson's in contract, so how about everyone shut the fuck up because we're not getting Clarkson. Okay, there's this whole viberbally of when we don't get a coach, it's like, oh, we'll get Clarkson. Well, Clarkson ain't leaving Hawthorne. And what do you want to do? Get Ross Lyon? Like, he would be good. Yeah, that's fine. But Teague ain't the problem. He's not the problem. You've got a whole bunch of players out there that are clearly not up to AFL standard or not to the standard of being finals material footballers. Tried and tested hard footballers. Name a thousand of them. We could. You know, do we really think that Plowman, Setterfield, Gibbons, Casbolt, Jones are all those types of footballers? I don't. I don't. And and it's small things as well. One percent is get me. When, when Plowman just drops his hands when Neil Bullen marks the ball. Oh. Stick the mark, you fuckhead. I couldn't believe he did that. I've Stick tried so I've tried so hard to to back him, and then he lets Neil Bullen run away. It's just too it's too many times, Terry. And, and Mars is right about these snowflake society supporters. Oh, they're doing their best. They're doing their best. Well, you know what? Melbourne did their best today, and they won. And Western Bulldogs did their best last week, and they won. And we beat Western Bulldogs last year, and we lost to Melbourne by a point. How are we a four-goal worse team than last year with bringing Williams and Saad into that team? How? How? And I don't give a shit what anyone says. If, they, if anyone turns around and says this rhetoric of us having players out like Martin, Fisher, Kernow, none of those three, it, actually all three of them coming in today, that's not how you win games of football and it's not how you sustainably win games of football. It's not how you become a successful team. We have the best full forward in the competition. We have the best full back in the competition and we've got one of the best midfielders in the comp. Three players don't win your games of football. You know that better than me, Terry. Simple. It's everything else. And look, I don't think it's I, – I really don't think it's the coach. I don't. But he's he's going to have the worst week this week. He really is. I feel for him. I really do. I, I feel like it's going to be just a week from hell. He's going to dread Saturday. And if we lose – oh, oh, Terry. Terry. The other thing is you're actually going to struggle. I, I'm, I'm – I'm worried for you. You're going to struggle to find things to talk about soon. Yeah. You yeah. are. Got to, got to get creative. <laughs> <We're gonna> have... <laughs> what are they doing get... us, bro? What are they yeah. doing us? I think this could either be one of two things now. It's either a documentation of the journey from when the channel started in 2017, 18 to like the flag or <laughs> the journey to like, me com- like us completely All losing us. our marbles. Yeah, All it's <sighs> and look, Fuck. we'll go us as supporters who go every week, me and you and the boys go every week and we put and we're proud of it. I'm bloody proud of it. And I never we never leave before the sirens ended. And you and you, you there's something you gotta be proud of because we're, we're living and breathing by that hope and that hope of success. Okay, and it will come, it will come but they're not making it easy for us to believe anymore. They really aren't. Like, I've seen fully grown men today give up. Yeah. Give up. Yeah. Look, and admittedly, admittedly, Melbourne, as I said at the start, when I started chatting, I think we've got to take a note out of their book on how they actually played the game today. I think their midfield rolls back and helps their defence really, really well. Um, We don't. We struggle to do that. Um, that, that's one of our biggest cliff. I had a I had a two and a half convers a two and a half hour conversation with your guest last Monday, Paul Barbaza, on Tuesday. My poor ear. <laughs> we, had, we had an amazing chat, but we, the main the main focus of it is that our midfield does not either defend hard enough, and it does not it doesn't back deep enough. I think today we saw a little bit of a spurt putting soccer in there. I love Doherty on the wing. I thought yeah. Newman coming back is going to make us a better football team. But then you put Setterfield into that team and he looked like Mr. Burns. He looked dreadful. Like dreadful. I just Gibbons plays a full game and has nine touches. Nine touches. Like mm. maybe he's completely lost. Like, I, there are that many players that have lost lengths in the last year and a bit. Um, 
the, the, it, it's concerning, Terry. It really is. It's really concerning. And I'm, I'm worried. I'm, I'm really worried because it just seems that it's, it's Harry or bust at the moment. It really is. Yeah. Fair call, mate. Fair call. I'm going to... Well, uh, well, she's a gun. Well, she is a gun. Well, she is a gun. Brownlow Walsh. Yeah, Brownlow Walsh. Um, Everyone's thanks smiling. for coming on. Be there next week. We'll be right. You know it, brother. Have a good Love one. You, brother. See you, bro. All righty. Who have I got? Uh, Mark the Shark. Oh, wow. Mark the Shark. Some nice fish I just had there, man. You know, it's mm, fucking good. Terry, you look very, very red, mate. Uh, did you want me to give you a hug and a smooch? Just like you yeah, saw, mate. I got. I gave myself a few jumper punches, and uh, this is what's happened. <laughs> oh, um, uh, firstly, yeah, I haven't, a, I haven't been feeling well, and obviously, B, I uh, wasn't at the game today, and yeah, C, I was only able to see just a fair, uh, maybe half of it, only because I uh, had indoor footy whilst I made a comeback. What'd you uh, think? Last, what was that? What'd you think of the game? Oh, right, right. Oh, look, just another stock standard um, day where another day goes by. One team obviously capitalises in red time. And the other, well, again, patches, patches, patches. But we're not 18, 19, 20-year-olds. Mm. We're in the mid-20s, even around our ages where we're in that bracket. Unfortunately, though, when you obviously don't have enough winners around the club, you're not able to pass on that message that you're selling in order to get results that you're preaching for. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Could also just make a note before um, we obviously keep going on. Just a clap and a shout out. Michael Maloney, you're not the rare of the reserves. You're the scenes rare of the seniors. What I mean by that was what you just said then was spot on. You've actually saved my breath of having to just repeat what everybody else is saying. Could not have summed it up anymore. So your Rocco's and everyone else tonight, M Maloney, just you can make a note if you want, Terry. M Maloney's my three votes for this fan camp for tonight's episode. He was mm. sensational. Yeah. As far as what I'm going to try and say, like I said, I'm a little bit ill, but I'll, I'll, I'll do my best. Yeah, just, um, just get to the point because I've got about six people waiting and I really want to wrap it up. Oh, okay. Um... I was going to say, you're going to wrap it up in half an hour or something quickly? Uh, just just get to the point. Yeah, no worries, mate. Um, obviously, it's rhetorical as it is. H was playing injured, but he's still got his three goals. And we've got someone to look forward to that could possibly win the Coleman this year. I mean, imagine if he was in the Geelong team with the midfield that they've got. Bloke would probably be breaking records. Walsh, obviously, being Walsh. And Weeders being Weeders. But... Um, if there were two other points that I can make, yep, I'll say this. If by some faith, I know it's tough right now, but I'm going to give this one last bit of faith. If in three weeks' time, by the time we have our bye, we're six and six, I, and I hope Black Carrot is even watching, I'll put in 100 bucks of stars. He can put in 200. But at the same time, I don't know if that's even going to happen because the, the club won't want to prove anything to us. But I would fucking love for them to prove that to us. But I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to do it. And secondly and finally, the coach won't say it. Obviously, there's a certain coach that did say this about his West Coast mob not long ago against Geelong. Carlton, we're, we're, we're weak. Done. Mic drop. Yeah. Thanks for that, Mark. Appreciate it. Jad, are you uh yep, there you are. G'day, mate. Yeah, I'm just in the car. Um I'll make it make it quick for you, champ. Um <clears throat> I wasn't gonna call in, man, because I, I just wanted to listen tonight, but then I heard someone talk about, you know, the rot and uh, I want to try and not like repeat myself for what I believe because a lot of people think my ideas, ideals are like my philosophy is pretty radical. But at this point of the rebuild, man, I wanted to see the change in in terms of the personnel of the team, the change, the change of the look of the team, right? And 
Um, and it not, and it hasn't changed, man. Like it hasn't mm. fucking changed. Murphy, Betts, Casbolt, Kona, whatever. I'm gonna maintain this. They are part of the rot, man. They they are the rot. And I'm not saying dropping them is gonna fix everything, but it's the start. It's the start of the new of, of our new team of our newly you know team that's emerged from this from this you know six year rebuild, and now we can work with this group to try and get to where we want to get to. But but brother, they're still in there, and these guys carry a losing mentality with them, and it right and it rubs off on the rest, brother. Like. And maybe and now I'm thinking, fuck. Maybe if we lose next week, maybe that will finally be the catalyst for the change that we want to see. And and it's not. And once again, it's not an, an individual plot against them, but them as a as a collective are a problem. And I it will and I just it will never ever ever change until they are seriously either you know bench starters or they or they're not playing anymore. Like you got to give the res- I want to see the responsibility thrust upon the new generation, and I don't think it has been yet. I don't think it has been. I think that safety net is still there. Um, even like what happens during the week at training, who's the one? Who's the one standing up in meetings and, and talking? Is it Murphy? Is it Kerno? Is it Casbolt? Is it Betts? Because if they are, man, that's a really big fucking problem. Like we we should be a newly built looking machine by now. Yeah, we and- should. We should, yeah, and and and, and I, I I believe that is personnel, Tiggy. Um, I fuck man, he might be a better coach with with you know a better with a different look at look, like better assistance around him. But what kills me, Terry, is that what fucking destroys me is that we knew this last year, and yeah. we've wasted another fucking year, brother. We've wasted another chance to grow because now, oh, you know, there's rumours that the scene that the assistant coaches aren't safe at the end of the year. Well, what the fuck does that do for us now, man? Now, I don't give a fuck about Melbourne. I don't give a fuck about Richmond. We shouldn't be worrying about who we're playing. We know, we know where we should be at this stage of our development, and it's just not fucking there. And mm. and I believe the talent is there. I believe in the list, but I don't believe in it while the while those senior core players are still such an important important cogs in the machine because yeah. they shouldn't be, and it's not going to change until that happens. And we wasted another fucking year on it, bro. Another year. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm coming around to that. Honestly, I think where you where you hit the chord with me was uh, the responsibility should have shifted by now. It really should, yes. and and. And the hard part is, how do you drop Ed Kerno? <laughs> you know, that, but I think That's what you're saying thing, is, I think what you're That's saying is, it's not about how can you drop Ed Kerno. It's how has one of these other kids not kicked him out because they're better. Yes, but I look. I believe a strong club makes these tough calls. Dropping Ed, who, tell me a kid who is going to outperform Ed Kerno really seriously. No one. At the moment, no one. But that's not really the point with me. My point is you just have to rip the Band-Aid off and bite the bullet. It should have been done, and it was being done under Bolton. And not for a second should we have kept Bolton. But that philosophy had to stay. Yeah. And we've delayed it, brother. And that's what I'm saying. It doesn't matter how well Mark Murphy plays. It doesn't matter how well Eddie Betts plays. It doesn't matter how many marks Levi takes. You've got to make the decision as a club and decide what is best for the club in two to three years' time. These are the calls that have to have to be made. And, yeah, okay, we might be Hawks next week. But what does that mean? Does that mean Murphy and Betts, all those guys, do they, do they get another four-week run in the, in the ones? Mate, it's, it's, we, we have to be thinking long-term. I don't know. It sucks. It fucking sucks because we want it now. We deserve it now. Well, I don't know if we deserve it. You know, we should expect something close to it by now. But the truth is, bro, I, and I've said this a lot, um, like talking to you, we deviated the path, man. And this is where we are. We're, de- we're delayed in where we should be because we don't want to give the responsibility off. We don't want to embrace the change that we we're, that the club should have done by now. And we've wasted another year, mate. And now what? Now, fuck, what do we do? We look forward to trade period. Who are we going to get there? Like, I don't give a fuck, man. It's true. The change needs to happen. It has yeah. to happen. 
and maybe a loss next week. Will, maybe, maybe that will be, maybe that's what's, what it's going to take to finally put the foot down and say, okay, we are changing the DNA of this team. <sighs> Mate, yeah. I appreciate you coming on and sharing because you uh, that's the beauty of this. There's so many different perspectives and, and theories, and I'm glad you have somewhere to come and, and, and share it um, because it's welcome. It's always welcome, and that's what this is all about. So uh, always always appreciate you jumping on and, and expressing that. Yeah, no, no, all good, man. But, like, it's it's it may be radical, but I really – someone someone like, you know, like a, a tougher coach – would have done that by now. Like, it has to happen, man. It has to happen. How is Stocker going to outperform Ed Kerno enough to push him out playing on a mm. halfback? Yeah, that's right. You know? Like, how how is it meant to happen when you don't make the tough call? Yeah. A uh, setter field's not going to push Ed Kerno out playing on a wing. Yeah, like, it's true. Yeah, I'll let you go, mate. But yeah, fuck yeah. me. There, there goes another year. I appreciate you, brother. You have a good one. Oh, love you, mate. Well, See you, mate. Love you too. Love you too. Where are we at? Franco. Franco, you there? I can't hear you, mate. You're going to have to click on the... No, you're going to have to click on the microphone button. I think you've muted yourself. I, I can't hear you. Yeah, can't hear you. I'm going to have to move on. Nathan. Hi, Jerry. What's going on, mate? Um, like as everyone, pretty disappointed. I guess you I go through the whole week of just going to school and then you look forward to the weekend, being able to sit down and watch them and then it's the same thing again. Yeah. Um, but I'm more disappointed, probably not so much with the players, but with the coaching, coaching staff at this point. I mean, I just, you sort of watch them and the skill is there. Um, they, that they, they, it's a good team on paper. I just think... Going into the game, they're not prepared. They sort of, they're just, something goes against them and they struggle really quickly, which is, it's it's just a recurring problem, which they take it to these top eight teams and they can match them most of the time. And then it just falls to pieces in one area and then that's, that's it. So I just think there needs to just be more preparation with going into the game, just proper opposition analysis you know i think what they want to do during the game is is fine you know they want an attacking game style it's working it's fine it's getting them goals but they should now the focus just needs to be put into you know oppositions more than themselves yeah is that yeah i get i take your point yeah i do, I do take your point it's interesting. You, you either back yourself. It, in, in that case, are you playing to win or are you playing to not lose? You know, it's a very philosophical question. Um, good discussion point. Um, I think ultimately the premiership teams focus on themselves for the most part, I think, because they, they, they build a system that's so um, well-drilled and believable that they believe. Like Richmond, case in point, last night, I think their system is what has allowed them to be so good for so long. Um, and so they focus on what they do. I think um, Dimmer really pushes that. I, I heard a lot of it in the Amazon documentary. He really pushes that. Like, believe in the system and eventually it'll work out. So you think we should move away from trying to build a system and try and move towards a damage control type mentality? Uh, I, I'm sort of half-half because... I feel they, they definitely know what they want to do every week. And, and that maybe it's just more the defensive structure than the attacking structure. Maybe that's just a problem in itself. But I, I do think that they sort of need to just take a bit of pressure off themselves and put it into the opposition for a bit. Because at the end of the day, this team's not going for a premiership this year. You know, they're working towards it. So the best yeah. thing to do is build it up instead of just go for it straight away and i know we've been waiting all this time but you know at the end of the day the longer you wait the better it's going to feel when it actually comes so that's that's my view on it no fair enough mate i do appreciate you coming on and sharing that i like that there is a it's different and that's what makes it uh that's what makes this a good exercise so um appreciate that and uh yeah looking forward to having you on again cheers Tez. thanks brother Maddie. Hi, Terry. How's it going? 
Um, pretty disappointing once again. Seen that one before, haven't we? Too many times. Yeah, it's becoming just, you know, the usual, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, don't, I wasn't at the game. Um, I don't know if you were. I was. There was a shot behind the goals where we're all running towards the goal and then I was watching Williams and he seemed to just be jogging. And mm. what? <laughs> I'm, it's been said a million times, but was it 800k or something a year yeah uh, something something between 700 and 800 and whatever it's it's marquee money i think we'll label yeah. it out yeah and it's just he's not uh, do we have him in the wrong spot is he there, there's something wrong there it's not just a matter of he's in the wrong spot and his fitness is down and blah 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 it, it's all of them. There's there's something really wrong there that's causing that issue. Yeah, there's a collective issue. It's it's not, you're right, it's not one or two or three of them. There is a, I think Joe came on before and talked about they don't play as a as a unit, whereas Melbourne really do. Um, and it just shows. It just shows. It just, it just, it literally just shows. It shows on the ground. Um, they do try. It's not that they're not trying. But whatever they're trying to do isn't working, <laughs> you know. Uh, the um, I don't know if if we're you know giving out points today. What I reckon, give Harry three. Mm. If if half of them had the courage and the will to just battle the way Harry does, he, what can you say? He's just that good. Yeah. He's he's definitely improved. Definitely improved. Very happy with him. Um, what's the biggest change you make for next week's game? Mm, I don't know. I really – I don't know what else you could do because I thought the list this week was my, one of our better lists. Yeah, when fair. I looked at the team sheet, I liked having Newman in. Um, I thought playing Stocker in the middle, as we've said, it's what looks we good. need to do. Yeah, it looks good. At least you can sort of see a pathway like he can build off that now week to week, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So let's see how we go, Maddie. Yep. You have a great one. Thanks. See ya. I've got two more guys. I've got Chris Beach and we're going to try Franco again. Chris Beach. G'day, mate. Terry, how are you, Matt? Yeah, you yeah, know, mate, another week. It's the same thing. <laughs> I don't know how people keep watching. It's the same shit. <laughs> well, mate, some might say it's a hobby. Some might say it's something else. Others might say it's therapy for the rest of us. So first of all, thank you for that. The first thing I'm going to say is the words Carlton and trust don't usually appear in the same sentences in recent times. Today, it was exactly one of those. Trust and Carlton did not appear in the same sentence today and Melbourne proved to everybody how far off we actually are from actually contending for the club. For the flag, sorry. Mm. So true. So true. I mean, we've got a good sample size now of finals teams for this year. This year. Um. And I think we've played for four, if not five of them. I'm pretty sure we've played five of them now. And um, I think for the most part, we've lost by four goals to all of them except Richmond, I, th I think. I haven't got them in front of me. But I think we can safely say we're a bit off. Yeah, we're a bit off. We're, we're a while off. We're off. <laughs> yeah, we are. Um, you know, yeah, you're right. It's five. We've played Richmond Premier. We've played, we played Collingwood. They they made the finals last year. They're now they're not going to be there. That's pretty much clear. We've played Port Adelaide. We're zipping three there. We've played the Dogs last week. Zipping four. We've played Double Melbourne eight. today. Mm. Zipping five. Okay, we're zipping five, and those the guys. Uh, uh, that, sorry, and the Lions as well. So that that's what that's six. Then pretty much. We'll take we'll take Collingwood out because I don't think they're going to play finals this year. But I think the other five will. 
Yeah. All right. So, okay. So we're in that we're in that ballpark. Mm. Um, you see, that's the thing. They're expected to be up there. And, you know, we're supposed to be showing something. Now, that something you could say is a little while off because if Mackay's playing with a busted shoulder and still kicking three, then who's actually stepping up as support? Because mm. Walsh ain't going to do it himself. That much is clear. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a good point. It's a good point. We need, uh, we need, I don't know what we need, mate. We need, <laughs> we need a miracle. <laughs> yeah. And, and look, there are, part, there, one miracle. We, there are parts to sometimes when I watch them and I say, we're not years away. And, and then I think, am I, am I saying that just to protect my own emotions? Are we really that far off? Um, I think when I spoke to Caden earlier in the week and he said, you know, we had these players like Stephen May didn't start very well at Melbourne at all. Neither did Jake Lever and, and whatnot. And they looked phenomenal once they learnt the Melbourne system. And is it just a matter of time for Williams and Saad and the like to gel with their new teammates and then for them to, you know, look to get in the ball? It could be maybe, and, and maybe that's what it is. But I feel like I've said that type of excuse for others in the past. And I've, I, 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 I struggle to trust that moving forward, you know, and and that's yeah. that's that's where it is for me. Um, yeah, no, no, good call, good call. I, I'm yeah. actually in agreement with that because, yeah, you know, like I said, Walsh isn't going to do it himself. Mm. H isn't going to do it himself. Cripps certainly won't be doing it himself now. And um, yeah, sure. People have said we have a good list on paper. You see, here's the thing though, and people might forget this. The game isn't played on paper, ladies and gentlemen. It's not played on paper. It's played on grass with lines around the ground. Mm. You have to play it on grass. If we're playing this on paper, it's a different story altogether. Yeah, it's true. Mm. Very good points, mate. Very good points. Are you going to be there next week? You bet your ass I'm going to be there. (laughs) I'm I'd making say, up yeah. for lost time. I'm making up for lost time thanks to 2020. So yeah, that's this right. Is exactly, this is exactly what I'm doing. And even if Hawthorne has been a boat you signed for me over the last few years, I don't care. I'm still going. Even if yeah. I'm only seeing one win live against these these mugs. That's right. One. No, very, one. Very, very well said, mate. I appreciate that a lot. Um, you thanks have a great evening, you. and I'll speak to you soon. No worries, mate. Speak later. See you, mate. We got one more. We're going to try and get Franco on again. Franco, you there, mate? Terry, you got me. I've got you loud and clear, my man. What's happening? How are you, how are you brother? I haven't called yes. in purposely before because I'm fucking rapeable with this side, mate. And the problem is with our side is that we've got supporters that call up before and say that we've got the best backman, the best forward, and the best midfielder. I couldn't give two fucks if they're the best in their position. Our team is horseshit. We make the dumbest decisions during a game that uh, under tens wouldn't make. Under tens wouldn't make. Cripps takes the mark in the in the centre and tries to play on. Hold the ball up and go. Jones marks the ball and plays on. What the fuck are we doing? My issue is is that guys like Sard and Williams came into this side to finish us off to play finals. You recruited Williams as a midfielder. We've given up on that already. Have we given up on that already? So now Looks he's like a halfback. It. So now he's a halfback flanker. So he wasn't the midfielder that we were meant to get. He's a halfback flanker. So what are we doing? We're going to keep rolling out players like Levi because structurally he's good. Well, what the fuck did he give us today? What did he give us today? Apart from a fucking headache, he gave us nothing. Absolutely nothing. Now, I know you're a Murphy lover. I, I get it. And he's been a great servant of the club. But we are carrying this guy to 300 games. I don't care what anybody says. I'm happy to cop it on the chin. He's been a champion of the club, but enough's enough now. Finish him off and retire into the sunset. We are three and six. I'd rather invest games into players like Gibbons, who was shit today. But invest games into Gibbons. Invest games into Dow, O'Brien, and these guys. Bring in Honey. Bring in Durden. I don't care. Murphy should not be in this side anymore. Neither should Levi and neither should a few others. I am sick and tired of investing my day, my weekend and my year into this club 
that does not invest in me or our fucking supporters. We've yeah. done our job. We've got 80,000 members that we've invested. They have not given a shit once this year. Okay? Now, unfortunately, it starts and stops with, Ke with Teague. Okay? He comes out and gives this absolute bullshit in his press conferences. And apparently today he's apologised for what he said about Crips. What sort of message is that? What message is that? You're asking players to, to put their nuts on the line and you're bringing that dribble to every, to every press conference? It's crap. And you I'm sick of it. You know what was interesting? I think after, correct me if I'm wrong here, every, you and everyone in the audience, I think it might have been uh, when we were two and four. I remember his press conference and he said something very interesting and he's been going on about how he believes in the group and whatever, he says what he says. But he said something to the effect of, we are very confident in where we are headed. And it was at that point that I really had red flags because how can you still say that? How can you no, still say that? What, 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 what got up my ass that day was that he said that, if we play at our best, we can win. What sort of message is that? So what? So what? We got within five goals today. We clap them off because the thirty point under thirty point result was a good effort. Spare me, spare me. We're three and fucking six with a top. We've got a top six list, Terry. I don't care what anybody says. We have a top six list, coached by a muppet. Okay, he is simply not good enough. We are no better today than what we were with Bolton. No better. And if anyone tells me any, any that we are, uh, where is it? Because we're no better. What is that game plan? I tweeted in February, our practice game against Essendon, that it was like the, the, the colder freeway coming out of our back line, out of our forward line. Has anything changed? So, so if enoughy like me is seeing it, what are they coaching? What are they coaching? Yeah. I'd like to know, what are they coaching? Yeah, it's it's hard. It's it's hard to see how this team hasn't improved with the additions that we've made and the internal improvement. Because I think, yeah, I mean, look, Harry has improved. Walsh keeps going on. Weedering keeps going on. We add Saar. Yeah, we but, add Williams. No, but, but you're talking. Yeah, but you're yeah, but yeah, but you're talking Walsh, Walsh, Harry, and Weedering. They're generational players. They're yeah, gonna true. get. They're, of course, they're gonna get better. But yeah. where has the improvement come from? It hasn't come from anywhere. Like, no one has gotten better in that side. If anything, they've all gone back. Cripps has gone back. Jones has last, you know, Jones can seize a lot of goals. He can seize a lot of goals. You know, who's gotten better? We keep wheeling out the same players. I'm sorry, but why does Levi keep getting a game? So, so the issue is, is that you've got players busting their ass in the seconds, yet Levi gets eight touches, and because he's structural player, he, he plays a game? What message does that send to SPS, Dow, Setterfield? What message does that send to them? Do you know what it sends? It says that if you're over 30 and you're a structural player, you'll get a gig. Because fuck if the kids are going to play. That's what message it sends. And it's the supporters that we've had on tonight that are happy because we've got Walsh, Wienering and Harry. I don't care. We're three and six. I want to fucking win. I don't care who we've got in that side because they're not playing as a team. Yeah, and this is the problem. That's a fact. We are not playing as a team. That's not... Uh, there's, I, we are not playing as a team. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. And that's Teague's fault. That's not my fault. That's not your fault. That's Teague's fault. What are they training? I mean, we, get, we, we had to win the game today in the last quarter. Why were we chipping backwards? You have to win the game. Go forward. So what move does he make? He puts Liam Jones to the forward line. He moved Liam Jones to the forward line. And this is the coach that is going to get us to number 17. Fucking spare me, Terry, please. Because, because this coach, he's proven nothing. He gifts games to players on reputation. Mark Murphy of 2010. Champion, champion player, but he's not the 2010 Mark Murphy. He's the 2021 version. Mm. Levi Casbolt is not the 2019 Levi. If he's not fit, don't play him. If Cripps is not fit, don't play him. If Williams is not fit, don't play him. That's my problem. Yeah. And until that, and until that changes, we are going to be the same club 
that continues to, oh, we've got 16 flags, we've got this, we've got that. At the moment, who wants to watch them play? Because you know what's going to happen. We're going to give a good effort and we're just going to lose by five goals and we're going to clap them off and say, well done, boys. Great showing. It's the same culprits week in, week out. And then instead of dropping a senior player, we want to pick on Setterfield. We want to pick on Gibbons. Setterfield played on Petrarca today. Was Petrarca any good today? He wasn't at his best, that's for sure. Okay, so Setterfield actually did his job. He nullified Petrarca. Did he or did he not? Yeah. So we've got to stop the bullshit about picking on the kids. And that's the problem with these supporters. It's not about possessions. He was made to do a job. I mean, fuck me. How many times did, did, did Jake leave a crusher pack today? The way that their defense set up today was very impressive. They were unreal. Yeah, but yeah, but who's on Jake Lever? Yeah. So if you're on Jake Lever, move him away from Harry. Give him another option. Mm. I mean, it's it's not difficult. If 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 idiots like us can see it, surely they can see it. But again, they're not implementing a game plan to win us a game. They're bombing it in and hoping that Harry with one arm is going to win us the game. I mean, Levi outmarked Murphy. The ball went to the ground, and then he got the ball quicker than Mark Murphy. Yet this guy's getting a game. This is my problem. Yeah. Who would you have played instead of Levi and Murph today? I wouldn't have played Levi full stop. I wouldn't have played yeah. Levi. I would have played another runner. I wouldn't have played Levi because yeah. it's a. this is the problem. It's, it's won and lost at, at selection a lot of the times. We found out on Wednesday night Jackson wasn't playing. True? Yeah. So play play either Pitnet or Levi. Just play one. If they move, if they then move McDonald into the ruck, bring Levi up with him, uh, Jones up with him. Why don't we play an extra runner? This is the problem. Last week against the doggies, where did we lose it, Terry? In the last quarter. We lost it because we didn't have what? A runner. They played a second game ruckman against Pitnet and Levi. What happened? Mm. I mean, players should not be gifted a game to play for this club. Murphy's done his neck or whatever he did two weeks ago. Don't play him. For fuck's sake, play Honey. Play Durden. P play the kids. I'm sick and tired of them gifting games to players on reputation from four, five, six years ago. Because that's what's happening. I mean, you guys can see it. Yeah. Uh, look, I have no – look, I, I have no issue. Like, I do love Murph. I have no issue if he retires on 297 games. Like, no issue, because the club does come first. It has to. So so remember back in the 80s and 90s, Hawthorne was called the family club? Mm -hmm. I, you know I, I don't Carl know. Okay, they were. Do you know what Carlton's called now? We're the nice club. We're too fucking nice. We give players games that don't deserve games. I've been a member for 30 years. I'm 39. 30 years. And this is – this last 19 years – has been absolute horseshit for 19 years, Terry. 19 years. And our club has accepted mediocrity for 19 years, right? I wear my heart on my sleeve. I'm passionate like most of our supporters. But enough's enough now. I, I, I get to the point where it comes Monday and uh, your week's ruined because of this shit we watch every week. It's true. Why? It's why? True. Why, do we, why do we put ourselves – why do we put ourselves through this – week in, week out, when we know what the story is going to be. Because we're sick, mate. We're sick. Yeah, but it's the same story. We hear the same stuff from Mr. Nice Guy after his press conference. We played well. We didn't transition the ball. We didn't do this. We're working on this. We're working on that. Well, uh, you've, you've willed this out for the last 25 games. Mm. We're all applauding him because he's got a 16 win, 16 win, 21 loss. I couldn't give a fuck. If he's not good enough to, 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 to get us to where we need to be, Get rid of him, okay? Because it starts and stops with him. You can't get rid of 22 players, but you can get rid of one coach. Uh, I'm just over it. And it's every yeah. week it's the same stuff. Yeah. No, fair enough, mate. I, I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed you uh, coming on and, and sharing. I'm glad we got the audio to work. So, um... <laughs> sorry, sorry, mate. I, I've, uh, I think that's the built-up anger for the last fucking 18, 19 years. But Jesus Christ, they, they break you every week, mate. Yeah, Every they week they break you. And yeah, they it, how much more of this can we take as a club? 
Honestly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know how you do this every week. I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I'm, I mean, I'm only 30, so I haven't quite... Uh, I haven't quite broken yet, but it could be coming. I don't know. <laughs> but I've, I've I've seen I've seen us win flags, you know, ninety five, and I've seen that. So I've seen the good times. But mate, we're a long way off being a side that contends. We're a yeah. hell of a long way off, and 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 you know, getting in getting in players like Williams and Sard, and the messaging from the club was that we're playing finals. <laughs> we're not a final side, mate. We are at best bottom six to eight. We are not a final side. We we just have too many brain fades, and uh, and it's not from our kids. It's not from our kids, and that's the problem. It's it's mm. from you know it's from Crips. It's from Liam Jones. It's it's from guys that they should be better than that. Fuck, they should be better than that. Jesus Christ, we're lucky to have some of these young kids that are in there that that mm. the boys spoke about, but. Uh, I don't know. I'm looking at a construction zone here, mate, at the moment, and that's what the Carlton Footy Club is is been like for the last 20 years. And um, <laughs> it's just, I don't know, mate. If you need me on again next time, give us a yell. <laughs> Always welcome, mate. Always welcome to come on. Really appreciate you coming on, Franco. Great to Thanks, chat buddy. to you, mate. See you, mate. See you, mate. I think a star was just born. He was great. That was a that was to the point, direct. Um, some home truths. Need to be said, like, where the fuck do we go from here? Who knows? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, that'll do it, guys. Um, therapy yet again. We're three and six. Um, I've heard rhetoric from the club with the players that we can't get too caught up in the, the win-loss record. I don't know about that. I think we're three and six, <laughs> and it's round 10 next week. Almost halfway through. Um, yeah, quite a few different perspectives tonight, which is good. I always like getting a few different perspectives, and it's not about who's right. It's just about the fans coming on and, and having a chance to say what they think about what's going on. And, yeah, it's complex. It's a complex issue. And, um, you know, there is a perspective here. You know, we missed out on footy last year, so we get to go back this year, and there's a lot worse going on in the world and and all of that. But, um, you know, Carlton supporters are some of the most passionate, and that's what makes the club so great. So um, thank you to everyone who came on and uh, uh, spoke with good passion and, and, and perspective and, uh, hopefully uh, you guys feel a little bit better than what you did 97 minutes ago because I think I do. Well, not really, but sort of. At least we've had the, the chance to verbalise what we're feeling. So anyway, big week this week. Blue Broad Show Monday, almost Blues Brothers Tuesday morning, Jumper Punch Tuesday night. we got the Blues Footy Boys Wednesday, the Next Gen Thursday, and then Blue Broad Nation on Saturday morning. We're going to do it all over again, and next week is a massive week because – Evidently, Hawthorne is now the biggest game of the year. And if we lose that, it's really going to be doom and gloom, it looks like from here. But let's see. Um, good night, everyone. Go the Mighty Blues.